Here we go. We are here today with Charlie of Spooky Pinball. Welcome to the South, Charlie. It's good to be here in Atlanta. First time down here, and it's a fantastic show. I'm having a great time. Thank you very much. Uh, being that Spooky is the King Kong, the, the Godzilla of boutique pinball, uh, what were the core factors um, effort-wise um, by you and your company uh, for success to this point? Good people. Number one, it's not me. I, I mean, yeah, I'm the guy <laughs> steering the rudder, I guess, but it's Ben Heck, it's Parker Dillman, it's, it's, it's David Fosma, it's every single person that works in the shop. It's my wife, it's my kids. It's, we're surrounded by really, really good people. And uh, without that, nothing progresses or moves forward. I mean, you can be the most capable guy in the world, but you're never going to be able to do this by yourself. Uh, side shoot, uh, how long did it take to kind of develop that team? Like, did it all just come to place, or did you already have these people around? Or? Life to me is just a bunch of happy coincidences, and sometimes you get lucky and you meet the right people, and literally meeting Ben Heck changed my life. Uh, just on a handshake and a hello and boom, I mean, it was instantaneous that things were going to go in a whole different direction. And I didn't know it then, but, you know, really? within three years, it, we definitely knew it. Jackpot. And yeah, and it's just been luck. I mean, Ben met Parker Dillman, our board engineer, at a show, wound up talking about something they were both interested in, became friends. He winds up, winds up jumping in, helping us get our, our boards for production ready. Uh, David Van Ness, our animation guy. Very good luck. I mean, this guy is a friend of Ben's through another mutual contact, and he had been a part of a couple failed pinball projects and kind of had been burned a bit and uh, when I approached him I honestly didn't know if he would even want to help us and uh, yeah he jumped in he's done an amazing job on Rob Zombie and, uh, and again it's all just happy coincidences and the right people really have uh, I wouldn't say it's made my job easy but it's made it easier manageable yes exactly because without talent and good people you're just you're screwed <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were uh, the big uh, kind of Adams family no no no's that uh, that you didn't do that other boutique kind of startups did like what were like the big ones the big number one ship games turns out that's really important if you don't do that bad things happen to you uh, no, you know, it's, we started small. I didn't want to take a bunch of people's money. We started from our own pockets, and other people had done that as well. You know, I went at Wrath of Olympus, is so another company that, or, you know, Riot Pinball did everything right, but just didn't catch the same breaks that we did. Um, not taking a pile of money in advance to me is the biggest thing, because it encourages and creates good work ethic and just pushing yourself, because if you don't get paid until that game is done, you've got to find a way to get the job complete. And it sounds like common sense, but you know, it's, it's the truth. Um, stay at it and do not give up. You have to finish the job. Yeah. And, and I love chasing that paycheck. Just getting paid when the game is done by somebody who is genuinely thrilled to get their game to me is the best feeling in the world. And I'm very proud of that. I mean, I think that's just doing things logically the right way. And you know, I've always said, I would love for Spooky to be a mini start where we never have to take a dime and we can just sell games. I don't know how you quite pull that off at this boutique level, but we're getting closer to it every day. We uh, got Rob Zombie down to a thousand dollar deposit and you know that was enough to get the first batch of games going and, and just get the ball rolling and get us into our own shop and all the things that you have to do to create a successful and profitable pinball company and that's important if you're not generating a buck you're not going to be here for long and you're going to be back doing whatever it was you did before and right now i don't want to ever i don't want to be that guy i like what i'm doing right now i was talking to ben he brought things of this nature in an interview last year and um about you, know, you get paid when it sells yep. and uh uh in the grand scheme of things you reinvest yep like, every dime goes back into the company like I, I'm a collector operator, and I, I, I say they say how you doing? I'm like uh, I, I get by, cause like I buy parts. 
I have to repair games. I'm yep. I'm look I, I buy this this corpse of a game and it, it'll it'll be back from the dead someday. Mm -hmm. But I have to reinvest. I can't say, oh, I'm just going to take a vacation or something. Nope. Uh, my vacation is I'm at Southern Fry right now. This is my vacation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same here, man. I mean, we jump in the truck and pull a trailer and about you know bring customers' games down like we did this this weekend and. Uh, set up the booth and do all that kind of stuff, but yeah, you're right, I mean, you've got to keep working at it, and every dime we've made, I'm not getting rich, it all goes back into Spooky Pinball, and to me, that's what keeps us growing, you've got to do that, you know, our time will come later, um, I'm not buying new in-box pinball machines, even though I would love to, I think Ghostbusters is a fantastic game, I would love to run out and buy it tomorrow, but that money's probably better going back into Spooky, and making sure that we like have a decent trailer so we can drive all the way to Georgia from Wisconsin and next weekend we have to go to the Las Vegas for Domino's. It's a 24 hour drive. So you, you know, it's, it's all full circle. You just keep feeding it back in and it'll keep giving back to you. So you said mini Stern. So it gets me to one of my questions. Uh, would you like to eventually ramp up production to a uh, thousand plus no. units? <laughs> no, no, I'm, we we went from 150 America's Most Haunted, and at the time we did that, we didn't know how to build 150 games. You learn as you go. By the time we got done with America's Most Haunted, well, honestly, uh, by the time we set up the contract with Rob Zombie, uh, we're guesstimating. That's what you're doing. Uh, 300 was the logical step. That's twice as many games as we'd ever made before. So it's a big leap now that we're getting into Rob Zombie, and basically we're just we're less than two months into it. And almost all the LEs are done, so we're building faster than we anticipated, which is a good problem to have. Uh, but we've also got the contract manufacturing gig with Domino's right behind it, so that's going to keep us busy. And, uh, you know, while we come up with game number three and figure it out from there. And yes, we will ramp game number three up to, right now, my best guess is 500 units. That is a lot of games for a small company. Proportionally, yeah. yeah that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a lot of games for us to build. And, uh, it, it's and the same kind of time frame too, or you're kind of like yeah, that's always been the goal. I mean, we we started everything slowly. I mean, it was me by myself, and then there was two of us and three, and now we have ten full time employees and a full time programmer, and hoping to pull in a full time dot animation guy, David. I'm looking at you, and uh, you know, just all things you need to do to keep keep moving forward, but to, to sustain a company, and the more people you bring in and the bigger the company gets the more expensive it becomes uh, yeah I mean your our, our daily expenses are way beyond anything we could have managed even two years ago I it, you kind of have to keep feeding that machine but to get to like a stern level no I have no desire to be that big that's a that is a monster entity that needs to be fed thousands of games a year and to me, I'd rather stay small and sustainable. And you know, if the market fluctuates or maybe the demand for pinball is you know a little up and down here and there, we can still weather that and do what we love to do and not really worry about you know feeding the machine, so to speak. When is Domino's going to be produced after the full production of uh, Run of Rob Zombie? No, it'll be done simultaneously. Um, but that's what you know. We've been getting a lot of down here in Atlanta and everywhere else. Right. Wow, you're cranking these out, these Rob Zombie games out faster than we thought. And, yeah, that's by design. We're trying to get ahead of Rob Zombie because we know Domino's is going to pull that back a little bit. We're trying not to let it. Uh, we will break off a couple of uh, good trained Rob Zombie employees to get them going on Domino's, which is, it, it's still a fantastic game. It's a full featured game. It's Ramps not, and, and yeah, all, all, all this. Two and ramps that. and toys and it's, it's everything you would expect. And the Noid. And the Noid is coming back, yes, absolutely. Um, it's everything you would expect from a pinball machine, and and you, you're, yes. and you're at the same time, it'll be a little bit easier to build than Rob Zombie. So, uh, yeah, we'll hire more. We'll keep that production rate at about the same speed. We told everybody we would we wanted to complete Rob Zombie in about 18 months, two years to 18 months is what the, the estimate was. And right now, I think we're on schedule to complete that. I would rather wow. uh, use it all the time. I would rather. Under promise and over deliver. Always. Yeah, always. 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 So. How did the Domino's Pizza Machine uh, situation come to be? 
honestly, that was all uh, Adam from Domino's. He's head of legal. He's a pinball guy. And we've had probably half a dozen companies approach either me or Ben Heck uh, about doing similar projects. But usually it was fewer games, or if it was more games, they expected them to be really cheap, you know, because it's more of a promotional piece for those companies. Domino's, uh, when, when Adam came in and started talking to us about it, you know, I kind of thought, yeah, sure, yeah, well, we'll see where this goes. And, you know, you never say no to any of those type of opportunities. And it, it just never went away. He was incredibly persistent. He wanted to see this get complete. He took it to the Domino's board of directors and wow. had all their meetings. And, and yeah, I mean, I was blown away when they came back and said, yeah, we're going to do this. And they guaranteed us a certain amount of games. And again, it, it, for a growing company to have a company the size of Domino's Pizza, again, we're, we're 10 guys in Benton, Wisconsin, this tiny little village of 900 people. To come in and say, we have enough faith that you're going to deliver these and do a good job for our massive national worldwide corporation uh, was overwhelming. But it guarantees, and we've had a few people that, why would you pick a pinball? No, 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 they came to us. And that feels great. This is guaranteed jobs, game sales that I don't have to worry about. Oh, God, what if this game is, you know, nobody wants a My Little Pony to reference Steve Ritchie sure. <laughs> pinball machine. And now I'm Unfortunately, still Unfortunately, people yeah. do. Some do. But, yeah. Yeah. Um. So it was, it, was, it was a fantastic <laughs> opportunity, and we're very proud of it. And it's, it's, it's kind of a different direction for pinball. It's the first of its sort. Uh, I mean, like I mean, the people have, drive, people have come in, yeah. Back in the, the 70s, but really nothing. In modern sense. era, in modern, like Mustang, I, I think they approached Stern, maybe maybe WWE did, because mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, so so they came to you and said, uh, we want to make a th like a certain number. They said they want to do a certain amount of them. Well, or? they had guaranteed us a certain amount, and then they opened it up for sales, and instantly, like 100 games were gone. Uh, so next weekend we'll be at the Domino's Worldwide Rally. There's 8,000 Domino's store owners from all over the world that meet in Las Vegas for a few days of fun. And uh, I just learned today that Magic Johnson is going to be like the keynote speech Whoa. speaker. Uh, Penn and Teller are going to be the entertainment. So this is like a huge <laughs> corporate deal. Oh man! And uh, yeah, as soon as we get out of Atlanta, I've got to drive back home and start right back to work on Monday morning to get this thing ready to leave next Friday, one week away, and then drive all the way out to Las Vegas. What is Domino's intention of behind making a pinball machine? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Like, uh, why are they making? A, why did they want to have a pinball machine made? Is it? Uh, are, are locations going to get them? Is it for to sell? Uh, is it just like a product to have out there, branding wise? I, I don't. Some of the locations will get them as long as they have a big enough footprint. From what I understand, Domino's yeah. has approved them. Uh, don't quote me on that. Fair but enough. That was my understanding. Uh, the big reason behind it is uh, it's for their Domino's in-house charity program, where if you work for Domino's and say okay. you get sick or you were in an accident and. Uh, they literally come in and they will help you keep going and take wow. care of your family and pay your bills and do whatever you need to do, which I thought was fantastic. And, you know, I believe in kind of working hard and taking care of your own. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that was really the push for them behind it. And, again, it's just a fun marketing product. And, yeah. and it's really unique, cool, and different. And, uh, yeah, and I applaud them. Thank you, Adam and Domino's. Anywhere there's a Domino's, cool. I'll go and yeah. play it. Like, and if they... Yeah. Uh, I mean, the pinball community, uh, we're all in this together. In general, we all should be in this together. Yeah. But, um, you know, if there's a game that goes down, I mean, there's probably a tech within an hour way that would come away, fix it, you know, just, you know, or tell you what to order, and, uh, you know, there you go. You skim a slice of pizza, yeah. whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, the pinball community is pretty awesome. We kind of help each other every chance we get. So I really hope that does, you know. If, that, if there is a need for that, that there's always somebody in the area. And I would love to see these games get into more and more locations. And, you know, again, that's out of my hands. That's with Domino's. I'd like to see you be able to beat a certain score and get free breadsticks and, and just cool stuff like that. Expose new people to pinball, people that walk in and order a pizza and go, what is that? You know, it's sitting in the corner and maybe go over and drop a quarter in and play it. You know? I mean, pinball does draw people in. Anywhere I put a pinball machine, even if I'm not running a tournament, 
people go to pinside map or pinballmap.com or it does in different ways and they mm -hmm. they'll go to the place to play pinball they'll get a drink they'll eat you know um and uh, like Radio Shack did this little thing with Iron Man. They did a high score event uh, yeah. in one store. And, yep. and but if they would have done it nationwide, then that would have. I mean, that's like. I believe that was out in Oakland. Yeah. It's win-win. Yeah. It yeah, really isn't anywhere. There's pinball. It's win-win. And. Yep. Uh, I mean. I'm a firm believer in exposing new people to pinball. When I first got into this, I was the old. Well, I was the young guy, and geez, I was mid 30s, and you know, the, the vast majority of people in pinball were late 40s and up and anymore that's not the case I'm 47 and I'm getting to be the old guard you see all these young guys in their late 20s early 30s they're starting to hit that point in life where they got a little extra money and they're discovering pinball and that's fantastic that's what we need to keep this moving forward yeah I was out here um, earlier before it opened today and this kid was playing Ghostbusters and I said uh, so what's your story and um, basically his, his dad has games and mm -hmm. what they would do is they'll they'll help operators in the area you know uh, tell them what's wrong with games clean games he'll work on it I said I said what I said, he's really into it. I said any I name drop games like he shouldn't really know like I have a I have a big house Gottlieb big house I have the only big house on route in the universe I'm sort of proud of that because it pays my cell phone bill every single month sure and he knew it I'm like wow this kid's like 15, 14, he knows what big house is, and I was like, I said, what What do you want to do in pinball? Because like, I know you didn't want to be a doctor or something, or a race car driver, you wanted to do pinball, and he says, he says, I want to program pinball machines. I was like, wow. Nice. I've never heard a kid say that. Yeah. And that's like, we need like a dozen more kids like that, because, you know, not every, is it, um, is that one of the, is that like really a core component, is like, it, without a programmer, you don't have a game. Right. Um, Ben Heck did all of America's Most Haunted on his own. Pretty much, all, I mean, all the code. And uh, when it came time to do Rob Zombie, we had kicked around. All right, well, I'm going to have Ben do that, which ate his brain trying to do his full time day gig on the Ben Heck show and also do this all night long. I mean, it's a hard job. So we had interviewed a few college kids. We talked to different people about potentially hiring a full time programmer when the budget finally allowed. And then uh, Mr. Fosma, David Code Monkey Fawcett, came in. Uh, he was working at IBM. He was getting a little burned on the corporate kind of world and you know, and just what it was. And, and his heart really lied in, in gaming. He, he had done a lot of phone games and things like that and was just kind of looking for a break. Uh, of all the people we interviewed, he was the only one that came in and talked to Ben. And Ben was like, that's the guy. He's good. And he really has been. And yeah, he's not a pinball guy, but he's learning. And with not being from that solid pinball structure, he's he's kind of injecting some new ideas. And sometimes we do have to reel him back in and like, oh, you're going a little too weird on us. But cool. What's something he tried or that he vi visualized that you're like, oh, okay. Well, here's, here's, my, here's my favorite one. He had a ski ball mode where you would launch the ball repeatedly for like a minute and you were trying to hit the in and out lanes in sequence and uh, maybe that's a little too far out there and a little too non-traditional so we'd have to reel that kind of a thing back in but at the same time he does come up with some unique ideas and rules that are really really good that maybe I wouldn't have thought of or Ben wouldn't have thought of and, uh, you know we are now learning more about the tournament side and how to properly balance scoring and things like that because uh, a lot of the top players now are coming over and playing the game and enjoying it, which surprises me, because uh, it is, you know, especially with Rob Zombie, it's just more chaotic, which typically tournament guys like to keep control of the ball, and this takes a little bit of that away. But they are enjoying it and having fun, and they are talking to him. And we've had several from here in Atlanta just and kind of feeding him a little information. And uh, we've also actually arranged a meeting back home with a top guy that... Um, we're going to sit down and talk to, and he, he has done a lot of this for other pinball companies, just kind of critiquing the code. And, you know, I never take any of that, like, offensively, like, oh, why would we change to your idea? No, if, it, if it's a good idea, it's a good idea. I don't care where. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that could help not just uh, like yeah. tournaments or leagues, but also at home. Yeah. You know, yeah. kind of a, a more, I don't a balanced game, then it gives everybody a shot of 
learn it it makes it easier to learn understand and uh, less frustration if I mean if, if, a, if a game's balanced it makes sense and the shots are makeable mm -hmm. the frustration lies on the skill of the player you know or the how eager like in the tournament it's not the skill it's when you get frustrated you play worse yes. when you get eager you play worse and and uh, when I played it you know first time I got I played I got 31 and that's a decent score mm -hmm. I got uh, third place and uh, I have not been able to repeat that <laughs> I got a 12, a 10, and a 27, and um, you know I I like that the game, um, it's it's a good kind of for me like not I'm not thinking rules but shot wise it's a good balance of shots I can make I can I can visualize in my head how to make and when the balls are going off the slings and the sides uh, I can use those to my advantage I'll either let them work or I'll intentionally move the game. Uh, I like I get physical with the games, not too physical. I didn't I, I didn't tilt today this weekend, but you know the game uh, should do some work for you. Yeah. Is that what is that some of the philosophy behind designing this? You're like, hey, the game should do more instead of just being, you know, a flow game, a little more chaotic. Yeah, and it's not that I don't love fan layouts. Yeah. But when I look at like uh, some of my fan layouts that I personally own, like Monster Bash and Attack from Mars. Uh, I'm not Steve Ritchie. I am not going to create a... It, to me, the new Star Trek is the best flow Steve Ritchie game ever. That thing is incredible. Wow, yeah. I yeah. don't have yeah. the talent to sit there and finely tune every shot until it is that ridiculously smooth. And that's why Steve Ritchie is Steve Ritchie. That's 30 I something mean. plus 30, 40 years of experience. And yeah. It's a one of a kind acumen. He's got his niche and man, he is the best at it. So I look more at what can I do to separate myself from that. I'm not going to be able to create that game. I can't be a Gomez and lay out a Monster Bash or a Brian Eddy and lay out an Attack from Mars. And quite honestly, it's been done. If right. you can't make one better than that, then go a different direction and try to make one the best of your ability, the way your mind is thinking. And honestly, Rob Zombie is not that far away from what I originally intended it to be. Um, it is a bit more chaotic. There is We needed to add a little bit more flow in. Ben came in and him and I spent one weekend and we took out like the physical ball lock, for, for instance, and opened up that inner orbit shot. So once you've got that drop target down, and you've got your shots set, you can now shoot that inner orbit and that gives you more control and it goes back to the, the player. So you start with three flow shots, now you've got four, five, and, but at the same time there's a lot of risk. Four slingshots, three pops, not in the traditional three and a quarter inches apart you know, configuration. Um, if you mess up or if it's a mode that requires you to hit a shot that's going to take that flow away, yeah, it's it's leveling that playing field a bit and uh, I don't like that I don't want to do just fan layouts over and over again. and there isn't a completely suicidal shot in the game like you get the pop bumper yeah I haven't right. come directly down I missed the ramp I haven't you know I guess I'm I mean some people have I guess but you know I mean if you're you know average player you, you can kind of imagine when you're playing the, the game like okay I can save this I can you know, it's it's not. There's no shot that's just straight down the middle, and that's the biggest complaint I get about games I have on routes. Like it goes right down the middle. It goes right down the middle. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's why the way they were designed in a way, or that's how they wear after you know yeah. many years on route. I mean, maybe that's you know the nature of it. There's but. so many variables, especially in an older game, that you know a rail gets bent an eighth of an inch, and suddenly that shot is not returning to the flipper anymore, and that's tough. I mean, it's. We have that in new games. It's it's incredible to me that when I and, and I personally still final test every single game before it leaves the shop. Personally, um, the workers will go through them, make sure everything is working, and once they think it's right, then I go over and play it. And I usually find two or three little things that need tweaking. But you can have ten games side by side, and everyone feels just a little bit differently, even though they're manufactured from the same parts, the same CNC cuts, the, you know, just everything. But yeah, they still have their own feel to it. And uh, at one point I owned two Twilight Zones and they played. One was brutally evil, 
and that's the one I still have. And the other one was like kind of kind and gentle, and it just and I don't know why it just happens. Um, the two games that, are, uh, that I've enjoyed most of the show um, is the Ghostbusters Ellie and uh, Rob Zombie. They're they're different enough. Uh, they had me going back for more. I didn't play it too much because I don't know. I just there's lines on both games, so I was like, I got in, enjoy. You know, I, it, if I had a if I, I if I had a two million game, I would have played it more. But you know, I, I got I got to get through some of the modes and um, shots are gratifying. I, I wish I could have cranked it up a little more uh, to heard the music. But what do you think of the the new Ghostbusters games? I think it's one of Trudeau's best. Um, to me. He's going to have a hard time topping Creature from the Black Lagoon because I love that game. It's so in my element. And thank you for saying Rob Zombie was one of your favorite too, by the way. Um, yeah, I mean, Creature to me is, uh, it's going to be hard for John to get over that. But Ghostbusters is the closest he has ever come. It's so nice to see a guy that is that sweet and that good of a human being and that talented of a designer get a license that is right in his wheelhouse. I was crossed my fingers. And yeah. He was coming back. I'm like, John's you know, a great guy. Mustang a is a good game yep. for tournaments. Yep. And if you're a Mustang dude, in WWE, you know, I mean, you know, if you're if you're the, a wrestling fan, and I mean, unfortunately, most people that are like currently avid wrestling fans, they can afford a Bud Light, but not a pinball machine, you know, and it's a hard market. But the LE is is a lot better. Um, if you haven't played the LE, it's it's a lot better. It's a lot more to it, and the, I like the pr the the pro. We it's a, it's a it's a it's a mean game. It's it's a fun game, but and it's like Absolutely. two different games. Yeah. The LE, it's like wow, and I still like both of them for what they are. I yeah. I can't I, I I personally can't compare them because they say oh well they're no this this two different games. Yeah, you know? yeah Ben Heck actually sold his favorite game. Uh, he's 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 got three. He's got a uh, Attack from Mars. Sold that to buy a Ghostbusters Premium, and I can't wait till he gets it so I can go up there and just <laughs> really get to play the thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I I love the game. I think it's fantastic. And kudos to John Trudeau. And kudos to Stern for helping him get a great license. Yeah, and anybody complains about plays. Um, oh, it's play, tough. It's a brutal game. Yeah, it's you have tough. to you have to play better. Honestly, yes. play I mean, better. Play better. I mean, if the ball jumps over something. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Yep. It's, it's pinball. Yep. Um, what are the odds of Spooky doing uh, a movie licensed pinball machine? Never say never. Uh, you know, we've, and I've told everybody here openly, so I guess I can tell it to you. Uh, right now, we've got Rob Zombie production to keep up with. We've got the Domino's game to finish, and then once I get beyond that, uh, kind of maybe another little trick or two two up our sleeves, but we need to focus back on what is the next spooky pinball game, and Ben and I are talking about how we want to approach that, and um, we've thrown it out to two different licenses, and we're talking to them, and we're also considering an original theme, which both of us are a little nervous about. It's it's a harder sell than an original theme, but we still want to do those type of games. You proved it's doable. It is, but boy, it was a struggle. I mean, that wasn't an overnight success as much as it seems like it right, is now. Right, right, I mean, that was two years of us. It was vivid. It's it's games. vivid in your yeah. your memory, like yeah. the process. And everybody else is like, oh, it's that's cool. Oh, I missed out on it. Or like, oh, I want it now. Or, yeah. You know, they they only know like the current events. Yeah. Well, uh, for everybody watching this, uh, those of you yelling, why don't you make more America's Most Toys? Uh, it was out there for two years. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't give them away for a while. And uh, when it caught on, it really did, and we're very grateful for that. But yeah, I mean, that's our word is our word. We said 150, we stopped at 150. Rob Zombie will stop at 300. So, and we'll it'll be five for the next one after that. More than likely, projected. it'll be 500 on the next one. That's my that's my best guess, unless it's a. We'll see. We'll see. Why why 500? Why does that kind of make sense? Because that it, financially. From a manufacturing standpoint, uh, from a facility standpoint, that's about what we can handle. That's a lot of games. And I don't want to overreach. I don't ever want to get into the position where I'm making somebody wait two, three years for a game. Uh, you know, it's just, it's not my thing. I, I would much rather 
get that small deposit, work really hard, get the game out there, complete the sale, and uh, kind of keep the excitement and anticipation going, you know, because I think once you've released the game, a lot of that goes away because you get that instant spark of, wow, oh, this is new. And then once that newness wears off, you're kind of in trouble. So. And with licenses, you have a, it's basically time frame based. Yeah. More than like production. That's the paradigm is uh, how long do you have? How many can you make? Is that kind of? Well, we're finding out now that Rob Zabby spoiled us incredibly because when you start dealing with other licenses, uh, there's a lot more hoops to jump through. Rob was so direct and very into it that all the approvals and everything went to one guy. It went wow. to him, and it was very direct. He would. You know, a, a couple of them went through his management team, and he was like, no, we're done with this. And he would literally either call or email me and just say, send it straight to me. Wow. That makes it unbelievably wow. slow. And, yeah, I, I don't expect to ever get anything to go that smoothly again. So, you know, we're, we're talking with these other licenses and finding out the reality is a little trickier than that, you know, especially if it's a... If you're doing a film or a band or anything like that, there's more than one person involved, and they all have to agree, and you know that all takes time and money and everything else. And it's just it's a lot trickier. Uh, do you foresee making a um, another music based pinball machine or? Never say never. Uh, we've honestly we've had several bands approach us that are into pinball, and they see the Rob Zombie game, and maybe they're not like. Uh, ACDC or Metallica level where they're just huge and you know but they see us and think oh well maybe we can get a few hundred on a spooky so yeah you never say never man I would love to do it as long as it's a band that I'm into and enjoy so if they came in here and say yeah here's a million bucks or here's two million bucks to make our pinball machine if and you like them it, and you're yeah, like, hey. that's number one it's gotta be you know <laughs> if Justin Bieber comes in and says dude I'm really into pinball bye bye to goodbye dude yeah that's <laughs> not happening but uh man yeah I, there's a ton of bands I would love to work with and then I've been kind of shocked at the bands that have come to us man. have they matched like or is there any bands that you say hey I, I wouldn't mind making that well there's a few we're considering yeah wow. I mean, so uh, if it's something I'm into it makes it a, a lot easier. It's almost like not work. So, so I, I I don't I I honestly don't think the the pin mall market is saturated with pin with music pins. I don't think it is because yeah. he, they cross over. ACDC might cross over to Metallica. ACDC bit. might cross over Rolling Stones a little, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I don't think. And then and then Rob Zombie crosses over to both of those. I don't think we're really there yet because music's bigger than pinball, you know. So oh, for sure, for sure. So I mean, there's really uh, there's a lot of good bands out there that would make excellent games for sure. But to me, I mean, the thing about Rob Zombie that was so intriguing, and I mean, I'm a huge fan, is there's so many different elements. It's not just the songs. He's such a visual artist and performer, and his stage show is insane. And he's got movies, and he's done television, and he's done comic books, and yeah, you name it. Toys. Uh, there's so <laughs> much to work with with that guy. It was easy to come up with content. So. Yeah, it's a really fully encompassing brand, and it's uh, yep. it's the only thing he was miss he was missing was the pinball machine. Yep. Um, who is designing the the third pinball machine at this rate? Who's? It depends which what? which game we wind up doing if. Uh, there's two different licenses. Uh, if one comes in ahead of the other, it'll be Ben. If the other comes in, it'll be me. And uh, we've already discussed that element. And if it's an original team, then it's probably going to be both of us. And I would say the worst idea in the world is to put two designers on a pinball machine. Uh, it's not good. You just don't use two artists like that in that in that way. Not, not an artist, but. Uh, Ben and I have a weird, unique relationship, and we can pull that off. I know we can pull that off. We can fight like cats and dogs, but the two of us never get mad at each other, or at least I don't get mad at him. <laughs> uh, we can agree to disagree, and, but it, it always seems to make a better product. One of us always caves, and that's, to me, the sign of a good relationship. You don't want it one-sided, and, and he's just a good guy. He's fun to work with. Why couldn't two, like... Designer, designer. I think if you threw like Steve Ritchie in a room with anybody that tried to tell him what to do, it wouldn't end well ever. 
<laughs> and it's not just Steve, but I, he's just the best example because he's such an intense and awesomely talented dude. He's not going to want to listen to anybody else's ideas. That's his game, period. And for those that may not have um, heard his uh, review of America's Most Haunted when he... It he did played. not suck. <laughs> That's a good review. Yeah, and he... I, I got a... You know, he he's such a good guy. He's intense. He is the Terminator. Uh, but when he first played Rob Zombie and saw it, he literally went over and sat down next to my wife in our booth, which to me means everything. Wow. I don't believe in competition. To, uh, you know, I do believe in the competition end of it. I don't believe that has to be us versus you. And no, there is no other blah, blah, blah. A I war, a battle. Uh, yeah, I don't like that at all. We're all in the same pond. We all sink or swim together. And for a guy like Steve to walk over and put his arm around my wife, give her a hug, and say, look, you know, I know you're nervous. Your husband quit. He's doing all this. The game is good. It's going to be okay. That means everything. Wow. I mean, these guys are still our heroes. Him and Dennis and oh, Greg Ferreras and George Gomez and all those guys. And, you know, and, and working with Joe Balzer was a blast. And just these guys are insanely talented. And John Borg and John Trudeau, I'm every one of them. I, I just I admire and appreciate when they give us the time of day and advice and tips and just it's great we need to learn from those guys right there needs to be some new designers and some new blood coming in and i mean spooky's always going to have that that kind of mindset that we want to give new people a chance and you know right now it's me and ben but it's not always going to be that way you know i want to if somebody's got a great idea and they come to me i'm willing to listen and, and who's designing uh, Domino's? Uh, who's that was me. Sure. That was me. When did that start? When did that, uh, that design it? <laughs> Not long enough ago. Uh, <laughs> the fact that it shoots as well as it does right now is a minor miracle. Uh, I'm really proud of that because we didn't have a lot of time to get that game together. It needed to get done quickly. And, uh, yeah, it's basically in less than six months. Wow. And with a very small team that was already incredibly busy. We were finishing America's Most Haunted, building a new shop, moving out of the old shop, moving into the new shop, starting the Rob Zombie production. I'm tired. That's a lot of work. And I don't ever want to be in this position again. Don't get me wrong. I'm proud of what we've done. But, uh, yeah, we need to slow down a little bit after Domino's. And is it the same artist that did the, the outside and the translite package? Is he doing the play field and... Scott uh, Gullicks from Riot Pinball, who yeah. again was with Wrath of Olympus. He did all the he did the back class, uh, he did the play field, and uh, Blake from NASA and I'm not gonna pronounce his last name because I'll screw it up. Uh, Blake D, there you go. Uh, he wound up doing uh, all the cabinet, which I thought was fantastic. Uh, it looks like a really pretty corrugated cardboard pizza box. And uh, the first thing everybody notices is, is that the dots in the dominoes are the flipper buttons. So it's just, it, it's pretty cool. Will they be like spinning pizzas or there's a lot of pizza in the playfield art or? Uh, there is a large pizza. At the, well, I can't talk about this yet. <laughs> but yes, there, there is pizza in the playfield. There has to be a lot of pizza. Yep. And, and the yep. Noid, does he make a lot of cameos in the dots? Like is he uh, oh, he's definitely in the animations. David Van Ness is again doing all the animations in the game. Uh, he is you're battling the Noid in the game. I was just thrilled they brought him back. I had suggested that early on as a villain because every you know you have to have a villain to, to battle against. And I I didn't know if they could or would right. bring back the Noid. But yeah, when that got approved, I was excited about it. That was such a like it was time. Like hey, let's yeah, do it was such a cool thing back in the '80s when I was you know I, I worked at Domino's and and uh, he was around at that time and yeah, it was cool. He was a neat unique weird character i think he deserves a video mode where you, you run away from the noid or oh, you run after have, yeah. the noid yeah well and it needs it especially with our color display and all that kind of stuff it it looks a bit 8-bit nes and then you've got that old classic great nes video game so it would be nice to bring that kind of feel back into the video mode and at least work that in for nostalgia's sake so is there anything else you'd like to say to the viewers no, man, just that I'm super, super lucky and blessed to be doing what we love every day and uh, can't thank everybody enough for all the support and, I mean, just not just the game sales. I mean, everybody that took a chance on a game, 
number one, that's why we're here. That's how we're still doing this. Uh, but we go to shows and there's so much support, people coming up and saying thank you and, and buying t-shirts to help, you know, because we have nothing to sell. We're here in Atlanta with nothing to sell but t-shirts. And we've sold enough shirts that, hey, you know, we paid for the gas, we can get home. And uh, yeah, we are very frugal, so I mean, all this stuff matters. I, I'm sorry to all the promoters and stuff that ask us to go to all the shows in the country. It's very expensive to do this kind of stuff. So, and, and if we're not in the shop working, we're not getting things done. We're, we're just not that big of a team. We don't have like a Jack or a Gary that we can just, I'm the face and go and shake hands and do all that kind of stuff. So it's, when we get out, we appreciate it. We really, really do appreciate that, you know, hey, we get to spend some time pinball people and just play games and I still love it too and you know it's ridiculous I can work a 70 hour week and my relaxation is finally getting an old Dracula and stripping that sucker down and <laughs> waxing it and cleaning it and LEDing it and I honestly spent 12 hours last Sunday doing just that and that's still how I relax so yeah I mean this is it's all encompassing when story. pinball is your work and it's your therapy, it's like... Yeah, and you wouldn't think, <laughs> you wouldn't think, but it still does, it's still, I love dragging home old games, I would love to get to the point where we can buy a new game here and there again, and, and we will, we will. Well, congratulations, thanks for, uh, this is your first show down the south, east uh, area. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic show, it's a great show, I love the Southern Fried Game Room Expo, it's just, it's been a blast, I love the diversity. It is. It's a it's a wide variety of, of things. This event, um, mm -hmm. and it, it draws people from all around that may not make it to Northwest or Texas or mm -hmm. California Extreme or Expo. Not everybody can make it to Expo. Not everybody yeah. can you know make it two hours, let alone eight hours or twelve hours. So or fourteen hours in a truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you're doing what you love, and uh, I look forward to future games. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to see what they are. <laughs> Thank you.